foot and cardiac. All right. So uh, I'm sorry uh, for the long video, but this was to actually give you an information that how different when we say muscle tissue, it could mean a lot. So hamare perspective mein, in our perspective, skeletal muscles are most important. Jahan pe hamara voluntary contraction of muscle. Ka. Ab humko pata chal gaya hai, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles and cardiac muscles are three kind of muscular tissue in the body. जो हम डे टू डे एक्टिविटी में मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन रिलैक्सेशन करते हैं हम कोई बॉल को फेंकते हैं हम जैपिंग को फेंक रहे हैं वी आर रनिंग इट इज ऑल डन बाय इट हैज ऑल डन बाय स्केलेटल मसल और वो ही हमारे टॉक का मेजर टेंशन रहेगा सो आई जस्ट वांटेड यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दैट डिफरेंट इट कुड बी डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ डूइंग इट uh different ways of understanding the muscle tissue but this is the most important factor now now let's coming back to the um, to our presentation again um so what are different kind of soft tissue right so first one is muscle right we've spoke about that muscle fibers that shorten and lengthen to produce movement of a joint muscles are attached to bone by tendons so matlab koi bhi ek jo fiber hai bundle jaisa hota hai wo jo contract relax karta hai bada karta hai chhota karta hai contract relax karke joint pe movement pada karta hai chahe wo knee joint ho chahe shoulder joint ho right aur jo muscle hai jo center mein rehta hai wo dono thread ke sath bone ke sath judta hai tendon ke through so jo main biceps agar center mein hai so this is your biceps और दोनों एंड पे वो रोप के जैसा बोन के साथ जो जुड़ता है वो टेंडन जोड़ के रखता है सेकंड कैटेगरी या वन मिनट आर यू शोइंग अ स्क्रीन बिकॉज़ वी आर नॉट एबल टू सी एनी स्क्रीन नाउ इज इट या नो आई एम आई एम शोइंग दिस ऑन द स्क्रीन दो ओके नो इट इज नॉट बीइंग सीन बाय होल्ड ऑन आई विल जस्ट सी अगेन कैन इट बी सीन नाउ लेट इट कम या वी कैन सी योर स्क्रीन बट नॉट योर प्रेजेंटेशन no okay uh, it has to be opened yeah yeah it is can you please uh, make it full because uh, that uh, i think hold the, on the full view the slide uh, it is on the slide sort of view yeah just give me a moment i think this is not happening just give me a moment i'll just convert this into it will, it will uh, happen it will happen it is just slow that's all yeah yeah no i think i'll tell you i think yesterday okay. also i had to do pdf version of that no i'll 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 can one hold on it's okay then it's okay we are seeing the material basically yeah all right so uh, basically muscle that fib muscle fibers are the ones which is shortening and contracting uh, shortening and lengthening uh, uh, to produce movement in the joint wo muscle fiber hai tendon kya hai basically tendons are tough bone of slightly elastic connective tissue basically bone ka ek hissa hai but it has got more elastic connective tissue that connects muscle to bone okay i'll show this in the video also to understand ki kaise judta hai muscle or tendon third ones are ligaments ligaments are strong bands of inelastic connective tissue that connects bone to bone so sabse pehle muscle hai jo ki movement paida karta hai it produces movement within the joint the muscles are connected to the bone by a tendon tendons are the ones which are tough bone of elastic tissue connective tissue that connects muscle to a bone right or ligament hai non elastic hai wo they are non elastic connective tissue and it jo joins to bone to a bone now let's uh, let's go back to the next uh, next slide as in next video yeah. muscle basics it seems like everyone wants stronger more toned muscles but if you're going to talk about how to get those bigger muscles you first need to understand the basics it makes you sound smarter and well you don't want to be that guy who doesn't know his basic muscle biology yet likes to give everyone training advice First, it's important to understand that your muscles not only control every movement you consciously make, but they also control every movement you don't know you're making. That means muscles control the movement of food down your esophagus. They control blood pressure by constricting arteries, and they beat your heart. Based on function and structure, we divide muscles into three types: cardiac muscle, which is found in your heart; smooth muscle, found in places like your stomach, intestines, and blood vessels; and finally, skeletal muscle, which is usually attached to bones. There's 640 of them, and they're the only ones that we consciously move. They're also what we normally think of when we think of muscles. Now let's look at a typical skeletal muscle. 
to your biceps. It looks a bit like this. The actual muscle is the red part. It connects up here to your shoulder via tendons, and down here it connects via tendons to your base. The work of contracting and shortening is all done right here in this middle part via the muscle cells. And in anyone's biceps, we're talking on the order of a billion muscle cells. Now these muscle cells are packaged within bundles, within bundles, and the larger framework of the muscle, they're all running lengthwise down the muscle. Now here's the cool part. A single muscle cell, called a muscle fiber, is long. It's also packed full of these long myofibrils. If you were to zoom into a myofibril, you'd see that they're made up of little sections called sarcomeres that have this cool alternating pattern of myofilaments. This is where the real work of your muscle happens. Let's zoom in even further. You have myosin and actin filaments running parallel to each other. The myosin filaments all have these bent extensions on them. With the addition of energy and a signal from the nervous system, they essentially grab onto the actin filaments, bend to pull it along, and then release. With millions and billions of these working together, you're able to lift stuff. Now it's important at this stage to remember that there are two different types of skeletal muscle fibers. They're often referred to as slow twitch and fast twitch. Fast twitch muscles are optimized for short explosive bursts when they tire quickly. Slow twitch don't have much short-term power, but are really good at endurance. Everyone is born with a certain ratio of these, but depending on how you train, you can optimize your whole muscular system for different sports. The next thing to understand is that muscles grow first by breaking down, then rebuilding the tissue. For muscle breakdown and growth to occur, you must force your muscles to adapt by creating stress that's different than your previous threshold that your body's already adapted to. Now this can be done by lifting heavier weights, continually changing your exercise and pushing your muscles to fatigue. That's when you... So this was to kind of give you understanding of, and this is yet, yet thoda technical lagta hai. It is, it sounds to be extremely technical in the initial stage, but it is important because your whole training principles are based upon these principles only. Skeletal muscle ka samajna hai, which is a muscle, which, which is a tendon, and how does those interaction between muscle and tendon and within the muscle itself happens. So that actin myosin principle jo bataya hai, wo bohat, every single movement in the body is based upon the interaction between your actin and myosins within the muscle. Or subse important factor is to understand fast twitch and slow, slow, slow twitch fiber ka interactions. That means agar slow twitch fiber hai, they are more red muscle fibers, red, red fibers. They can hold to do activities for longer period of time. Na? Slow twitch fiber may endurance based fibers hota hai that can hold for longer period of time. And fast twitch fibers may wide fibers hota hai that can be explosive strength. Ke liye hota hai. Normal human being may ye almost sub may dono hota hai, but you have more, more uh, sub supremacy of a particular kind of fiber in a certain athlete. So as coaches, aapke liye sabse important ye baat hai. just imagine somebody who does not have high amount of slow twitch fiber and you end up giving him a marathon uh, training. If, he, if he's going to become a marathon runner, he needs to primarily have slow twitch fibers. And likewise, other way around. You can't have a weight lifter doing very high amount of anaerobic activity to lift a weight of such high intensity by having more slow, slow twitch fibers. So now we ethical considerations that we can't take the muscle biopsy of a child to do it. There are multiple ways to gauge it now. But just to give you an understanding, as much as it sounds technical, it is very important for all of us to keep this as a premise for our training. And then how the muscle grows will be coming in the next few things. So I think everybody in the picture now to understand what is a muscle, what is a tendon, now what is a ligament, right? Now, what are the risk factors? So soft tissue injury generally involves one or more of the structure, uh, one or more uh, of the structure and that can be wo injury, it can be because of one or two structures and the main elements what it brings is sprain, strain or direct blows which we call as contusion. So it, it could be a sprain of a ligament, it could be a strain of a muscle or it could be a direct blow, Matlab, direct chot lagnan which we medically hum contusion. Bolte. Now, the biggest risk factor is a history of a previous injury. Isilie, whenever, I, yesterday also I said that pre-medical examination is very important because if a child comes to you in your program, you need to be aware of all the smaller and bigger injuries he's had in the past. Because one injury can be a predisposing factor for another injury. The third factor is praying, prayers returning from injury requires an extra care. So, it's very important to understand. So now just to take you uh, from uh, Victoria Institute of Sports uh, 
के साथ बेसिकली व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ इंजरीज जस्ट टू शो लाइफ राइट सो हैंग इन देयर टाइप्स ऑफ इंजरीज Injuries can be classified into different categories. A direct injury occurs when the body makes contact with an external object, another person, or the ground. For example, you can dislocate your finger if it's hit on the end by a ball. Direct injury is one that might occur such as a contusion where when you're watching football someone gets knocked by another footballer and they get a contact on their leg and they get a direct injury to that leg. An indirect injury is caused by forces inside the body such as excessive strain on the muscles and ligaments. It may be when they strain a muscle and they're swinging through in the late phase of running and they strain that hamstring which we see so often in football and hockey these days overuse injuries occur when specific body regions are used over periods of time particularly when the movements are repetitive and low impact some of the other injuries i've had are sort of bursitis so um shin splints and inflammation of some of the ankle joints um as a result of all the um the jumps training that i do a soft tissue injury is an injury to any tissue except bone and teeth for example it could be a muscular or skin injury you know during the season you've got calluses on your hand starting the season even after four weeks you get a whole lot of new blisters and stuff like that hard tissue injuries are exclusively injuries to bone and teeth Alright, so now we understand now कि इसका exactly what is the difference, right? So basic parameters are it is direct injury or an indirect injury. Direct injury could be because of a blow. We could or सबसे commonly you see this kind of injury every day in your in your sporting environment. इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि it may not be a very big major consideration which will require a medical intervention. It could be a day to day activity. Second is indirect blow. Indirect injuries are the one which is happening because of things going inside. Muscle weak होना, muscle stiff होना, recovery नहीं होना, वो सब factor हो सकता है. Now those categories are kept into two major ones, right? Which is which is your acute factor and chronic factor or overload factor, which I'll come in the next few slides now. So now what are the basic prevention, right? So we need to first. I always believe that prevention is the best thing what we can do as anybody who is working in the sporting scenario. If we can identify the reasons why it is happening, we can prevent it. So for any sport, warming up, stretching, and cooling down is an extremely important part of it, right? Ensuring readiness by an adequate training is extremely important. Warm up, stretching to हो गया, but then also readiness physically, mentally, emotionally. Am I ready enough to take up the training, or ready enough to play that sport, or ready enough to play the competition? Right. It includes appropriate speed work in training. So most of the sport requires competition with an opposite guy. So if you are not doing sufficient agility or speed work in your training, you might predispose your athlete to a major injury. that also includes appropriate stretching and strengthening so the strength work in the gymnasium should also be very reflective of the kind of sport what you are doing aap jis sport mein apne bacche ko training kar rahe hain uske sath hi relationship uska gym mein workout hona chahiye strengthening ka bhi aur stretching ka bhi ek generalized way of training does not go same thing in track and field also you have to understand that all the athletes are not similar long distance are different long uh, middle distance are different as well as the sprint uh, sprinters are different so your strength program also has to be based upon that now uh, sorry yeah so now your um, graded increase in intensity and duration kal maine iske bare mein bahut lamba baat kiya ki how you have to grow gradually aapko dheere dheere intensity aur duration dono aaram se badhana hai taki prevent kar sake aur koi major injury na ho then maintaining high amount of cardiovascular fitness and endurance so if you see maximum injury in basketball in football in field hockey happens either in the ending of the halves or ending ending of the quarters maximum football hockey basketball injuries aapke half ke end mein hota hai ya quarter ke end mein hota hai wo kyon hota hai kyunki main mera jo fitness level samne wale competition ke uske sath compete karne ke barabar nahi hai so jab main apne aap ko push karta hu i end up getting some kind of muscle injury or some soft tissue injury soft tissue injury 
देन द नेक्स्ट फैक्टर इज अलाउंग एडिक्वेट रिकवरी टाइम एक सेशन से दूसरे सेशन के बीच में रिकवरी टाइम बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है स्पेशली इन केस ऑफ हैविंग मल्टीपल सेशन इन अ डे जब आप मॉर्निंग में स्ट्रेंथ ट्रेनिंग दोपहर में टेक्निकल ट्रेनिंग इवनिंग में स्पीड वर्क ऐसा कुछ करते हैं तो आपको सफिशियंट टाइम देना है बच्चे को या एथलीट को रिकवर करने के लिए विच इंक्लूड्स फूड विच इंक्लूड्स स्लीपिंग टाइम विच इंक्लूड्स हाइड्रेशन ऑल ऑफ दैट देन वेरिंग अप्रोप्रिएट फुटवेयर शूज जो है बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर है एलिट स्पोर्ट में डिफरेंट सर्फेस रिक्वायर्स डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ फुटवेयर टेनिस प्लेयर्स इन ऑल द फोर डिफरेंट कोर्ट्स दे विल यूज डिफरेंट फूड सर्फेस सेम थिंग हॉकी प्लेयर्स इफ दे डूइंग एनी कंडीशनिंग इन द ग्रास सर्फेस देर फुट वेयर हैज टू बी डिफरेंट एज कम्पेयर टू वेन दे डू आर्टिफिशियल सर्फेस सो ये सब चीज कंसिडरेशन रखना है Now wearing protective equipment extremely important. Worn out, खराब हुआ equipment can be highly dangerous. So जरूरी नहीं कि वो बाहर से टूटा हुआ दिखे हमको इसका फैक्टर ये नहीं कि वो टूट गया है तभी हमको बदलना है या वो फट गया है तभी बदलना है Everything has got a longevity period. An athlete at the top most level should be given utmost attention to the equipments what they use. The next factor will be ensuring playing surface and sporting environment. So you have to ensure बहुत गर्मी तो नहीं है राइट यू हैव टू एंश्योर बहुत ज्यादा बारिश हो रहा है तो ग्राउंड स्लिपरी तो नहीं हो गया है आर वी ट्रेनिंग इन अ वेरी कोल्ड एनवायरनमेंट दैट मींस प्रोबेबली अ हॉट शावर और लॉन्ग वार्म अप विल बी यूजफुल इफ यू इफ यू आर प्लेइंग अ स्पोर्ट और वी आर कंपीटिंग इन अ हायर एल्टीट्यूड देन डूइंग सफिशिएंट अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क ऑल ऑफ दैट शुड बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट इज एडुकेट हाइड्रेशन बिफोर ड्यूरिंग एंड आफ्टर प्ले एंड लास्ट इज टू अवॉइड पुश थ्रू द इंजरी सो ये इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स है ये सब चीज की हमको कैसे इंजरी को प्रिवेंट कर सकते हैं Now let me just take you to some other video around it. Exactly. Um, so, for example, um, let's know. So, I will I will take you the first kind of uh, soft tissue injury just to run through few few of the slides. Then I'll show you some videos back to back. So, acute injury. First thing, acute injury. What it is? There has a recent history of the injury, which is usually due to a known or unknown incidents. Rarely. Basically, आपके एक acute injury का मतलब एक normal situation में एक history रहेगा कि वो injury क्यों हुआ? इधर चोट लगा. इधर सडनली उसका मसल खींच गया या उसका लोड बढ़ गया उसके कारण एक इंसिडेंट रहेगा कभी कभी वेरी रेयरली वी डोंट नो बट देर इज अ इंजरी विच इज वी डोंट नो व्हाई इट इज है सेकेंड फैक्टर इट्स यूजुअली ड्यू टू वन पर्टिकुलर रीजन और इंसिडेंट ऑफ एन इंजरी जैसे मैं बताया कि आपको पता रहेगा स्पेसिफिकली चोट लगा गिर गया मसल खींच गया दिस ऑल है थर्ड वन इज विथ रेयरली प्रेजेंस ऑफ एनी प्रीवियस इंजरी तो कभी कभी पुराना इंजरी जैसे लेफ्ट हैम्पस्टिंग में प्रॉब्लम था मैं उसको पुश करते गया तो अब राइट काफ में इंजरी आ गया तो वो सब कारण हो सकता है अक्यूट इंजरी का राइट ना सो मसल क्रैम्प सबसे पहला एक्सरसाइज ये सबसे कॉमन इंजरी आप अपने स्पोर्ट में देखेंगे कोई भी आउटडोर स्पोर्ट में या फिजिकल स्पोर्ट में विच इज कॉल्ड एज एक्सरसाइज इंड्यूस्ड मसल क्रैम राइट इट टिपिकली हैपेंस ड्यूरिंग एक्सट्रीम एक्सर्शन इट इज मोस्ट कॉमन ड्यूरिंग गेम्स दैन इन ट्रेनिंग राइट एंड स्टडीज सजेस्ट द जेनेटिक कॉम्पोनेंट टू क्रैम्स आर देर एंड इट इज ऑल्सो डायरेक्ट कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ मसल फटीक and then and most importantly it typically involves two joint muscle so ki pani ka kami hai it is not a very well understood philosophy uh, the biggest factor which is coming out is fatigue agar aapka training sufficient nahi hai body mein nutrition theek nahi tha ya recovery theek nahi hua tha plus genetic component ye sub factor cramps ke liye ho sakta hai reason so now just quickly let's go to couple of videos which explains what are muscle cramps right A cramp is a condition where there is an involuntary contraction of the muscle which does not relax causing a lot of pain. It is a common condition affecting many people at some point in their lives. It can affect a single muscle or multiple muscles. Individuals who are involved in vigorous training such as athletes are commonly affected by cramps. Calf muscles are more commonly affected with leg cramps. Causes of leg cramps dehydration or inadequate intake of water depleted levels of potassium and sodium salt tense or stiff muscles vitamin deficiencies may also cause cramps poor blood circulation also causes cramps vigorous physical activities and muscle fatigue may cause muscle cramps injury or trauma such as bone fracture can cause muscle spasm and cramps it acts as a defense mechanism to prevent further injury treatment of leg cramps the affected muscle should be stretched and the stretch should be held for as long as is required 
Gently massaging the affected muscles promotes blood flow and relieves the cramps. Sports massage is also helpful. Stretching and strengthening helps in preventing further episodes of cramps. Patient should have adequate salt intake in diet. Although this may be an unlikely cause as people consume a lot of salt in processed foods. So this factor that ki bar bar jo hum ek, ek ye alag alag elements ko discuss kiya unhone, and this factor that only salt can be the reason that is very less understood reason of uh, muscle cramps. Now one more video I'll show you sh uh, shortly to make a little bit more elaborate understanding of what muscle cramps can Stomach. be a reason for respiration. <laughs> what is the huh? cause of muscle cramps? Excess sleep. No. Respiration is a process in which the cells of our body produce energy. <laughs> Normally, our cells respire aerobically. In this process, <laughs> the glucose, with the help of oxygen, is completely broken down to produce energy, water, and carbon dioxide. Is this energy then used for all our activities? Indeed. <laughs> However, during heavy exercise, our body cannot deliver oh. enough oxygen to the cells of our muscles. Hence, in such situations, anaerobic respiration helps us to produce some energy temporarily and thus continue our work. In anaerobic huh? respiration, the glucose is partially broken down in the absence of oxygen to produce comparatively less amount of energy and a waste product called lactic acid. Now, one of the most prominent reasons for the muscle cramps huh? is the accumulation of this lactic acid. <laughs> so you see, the important factor comes down is training factor only. Right? That means we have to train the muscle in the capacity so that it can take up the loading. And that's where your aerobic and anaerobic component comes into play. Especially people working with middle distance and long distance athletes, this is a very important consideration to train the muscle anaerobically in between so that jab aapka comp for example, the competition in Tokyo was shifted from Tokyo to some other place because at that point of time, the summer temperatures are very peak in, in, in Tokyo. So for some European athletes, this could have been a disadvantage. So uh, all I'm trying to say is the understanding of the event and understanding of the environmental factors and then basing your training is a very, very important component to prevent muscle cramps. It is not just lack of um, uh, salt or water in the body. So keep that in the mind whenever you're training things like now suddenly a lot of people are going into fasted training or people are going into, they're becoming vegans now. So keep all those perspective in terms of keeping your training your athlete into a certain manner to prevent muscle cramp. We have already discussed in the video about treatment, stretching, ensure similar intensity of training. Jaisa aap match khelenge, waisa hi intensity competition training mein rakhi. Otherwise, agar differences raega, to you will always get in some kind of problem in the match. Remain calm. There are some studies which are also showing too much of neuro, neural stress too much of anxiety before a game also can cause a muscle tightness and spasm, which indirectly can predispose to muscle spasm and uh, muscle cramps. So try and keep calmness, mental visualization, breathing techniques. This could be one way of training an athlete who constantly keep getting muscle cramps. Then obviously hydration is an important component. And as we saw, nutrition plays a very important role. Aapka nutrition pre-game meal is very important. What, what time of the day you're eating the game before eating the meal before the game what kind of food you're taking, all those factors come into play in terms of taking a nutri proper uh, nutrition for muscle cramp. Now, delayed onset of muscle soreness, right? This is very common. Ye sabse, ye do teen cheez common aap har export mein so now what is DOMS? It is used to describe pain felt after training. Typically, it lasts for 12 hours. Malab, it starts around 12 hours ke beech mein, and it can sustain for 24 hours to 48 hours. Simple term, mein, I can only lift a mobile in my hand like this. Now I want to lift a mobile plus maybe a dictionary in my hand and then I want to do it. My biceps is not ready for that kind of work. Usame body will create that movement, but later on what will happen is after body may soreness start hoga, which is called as domes now. So what bada advantage hai for the muscles to grow and to become stronger. Right? So what happens is subse jada eccentric exercises mein hum dekhte hain, creating kinase inside the muscle increases. So lot of everybody as coaches know what is concentric and eccentric. Just to make it a little bit more clear, 
जब कोई भी अप्रोक्सीमेशन होता है जॉइंट का दोज आर कॉन्सेंट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन वेन एवर द मसल इज इन एक्सटेंडेड फेज जब मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होकर लेंदेन पोजिशन में जाता है उसको इसेंट्रिक कॉम्पोनेंट बोलते हैं इसेंट्रिक कॉम्पोनेंट या इसेंट्रिक ट्रेनिंग करने से सबसे ज्यादा क्रिएटिंग काइनेज आपके मसल में प्रोड्यूस होता है विच कैन बी द बिगेस्ट रीजन फॉर वाई डोम्स कैन बी लास्टिंग एंड समटाइम्स इट कैन लास्ट ऑफ फाइव फाइव डेज राइट सो नाउ उसका बेसिकली वो बहुत बड़ा फिनोमिना है Actually, don't say it means when I'm saying that. Exactly, क्या मतलब इसका? Muscles. We have over six hundred of them. They make up between one third and one half of our body weight, and along with connective tissue, they bind us together, hold us up. Help us move, and whether or not bodybuilding is your hobby, muscles need your constant attention because the way you treat them determines whether they will wither or grow. Say you're standing in front of a door, ready to pull it open. Your brain and muscles are perfectly poised to help you achieve this goal. First, your brain sends a signal to motor neurons inside your arm. When they receive this message, they fire. causing muscles to contract and relax which pull on the bones in your arm and generate the needed movement the bigger the challenge becomes the bigger the brain's signal grows and the more motor units it rallies to help you achieve your task but what if the door is made of solid iron at this point your arm muscles alone won't be able to generate enough tension to pull it open so your brain appeals to other muscles for help you put at your feet Tighten your belly and tense your back, generating enough force to yank it open. The system has just leveraged the resources you already have, other muscles, to meet the demand. While all this is happening, your muscle fibers undergo another kind of cellular change. As you expose them to stress, they experience microscopic damage. In this context, is a good thing. In response, the injured cells release inflammatory molecules called cytokines that activate the immune system to repair the injury. This is when the muscle building magic happens. The greater the damage to the muscle tissue, the more your body will need to repair itself. The resulting cycle of damage and repair eventually makes muscles bigger and stronger as they adapt to progressively greater demands. Since our bodies have already adapted to most everyday activities, those generally don't produce enough stress to stimulate new muscle growth. So, to build new muscle, a process called hypertrophy, our cells need to be exposed to higher workloads than they are used to. In fact, if you don't continuously expose your muscles to some resistance, they will shrink. A process known as muscular atrophy. In contrast, exposing the muscle to a high degree of tension, especially while the muscle is lengthening, also called an eccentric contraction, generates effective conditions for new growth. However, muscles rely on more than just activity to grow. Without proper nutrition, hormones, and rest, your body would never be able to repair damaged muscle fibers. Protein in our diet preserves muscle mass by providing the building blocks for new tissue in the form of amino acids. Adequate protein intake, along with naturally occurring hormones like insulin-like growth factor and testosterone, help shift the body into a state where tissue is repaired and grown. This vital repair process mainly occurs when we're resting, especially at night while sleeping. Gender and age affect this repair mechanism, which is why young men with more testosterone have a leg up in the muscle building game. Genetic factors also play a role in one's ability to grow muscle. Some people have more robust immune reactions to muscle damage and are better able to repair and replace damaged muscle fibers, increasing their muscle building potential. The body responds to the demands you place on it. If you tear your muscles up, eat right, rest, and repeat. You'll create the conditions to make your muscles as big and strong as possible. You see, that was that's how whenever we say that muscle domes, hoa or tooted muscle, it it means so much good value to it. 
but the biggest factor is to now give a proper training time proper recovery time and then then nutrition so ye sab combine karenge so actually your muscle breakdown or the domes which are result of the muscle breakdown and and, and uh, cytokines it's actually good phenomena so wo video mein aapko treatment pata chal gaya hai but just to kind of make it easy i'll just show you like exactly kya what what can we first thing is education about the so jab pehli bar koi athlete aapke system mein aata hai if you have put him to a sudden load which he is not used to it he will complain of dome so educate him that this is a normal phenomena now probably you can utilize a video like this to show them that how was that leading loading is actually helping them to become stronger and bigger and better so then simple things could be foam rolling active movements very important whenever there are some whenever the domes are there up some low level of activity and doing some underwater exercises could be a good way of releasing the lactic acid inside the body stretching could be good cold baths are important and then simple analgesia but the most important which i have not written but i have shown in the video is the food and the sleep your recovery happens maximum when you're resting and taking good food right so that is that is one so i think the concept of domes is clear now now bruise now next month bruise we spoke about how contusion or a cock means bruises are caused by direct force apply force applied to the body means ek kick laga kisi ka ke kandha lag gaya uske karan contusion ho gaya right it results in comp compression and bleeding into the soft tissue so andar agar chot laga chota sa aise chot laga to andar thoda bleeding aur soft tissue edema rahega which is called as hematoma and it can be presented with a swelling or discoloration most often than not these things can be अपने आप ठीक हो जाता है इट डन रिटी टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम यू यू इधर अगर बहुत ज्यादा स्वेलिंग है या पेन है सो वी कैन डू आइसिंग सम कंप्रेशन और थोड़ा एक्टिविटी मॉडिफिकेशन करने से दिस कैन गेट बेटर बट अगेन ब्रूजिंग आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ इट बिकॉज समटाइम्स वी अंडर माइंड की एक हॉकी प्लेयर का बहुत जोर से स्टिक लगा है हो सकता है बाहर से दिख नहीं रहा बट इट कुड मीन इट कुड बी अ फ्रैक्चर इट कुड बी अस इट कुड बी अ टेंडन ब्रेक डाउन सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन हाउ मच हिमेटोमा यूर सींग कितना पेन है कितना स्वेलिंग है दैट कुड बी अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ फैक्टर फॉर अस टू बी लिटिल बिट मोर केयरफुल कि एग्जैक्टली कितना इसका इंपैक्ट राइट नेक्स्ट वन कम्स डाउन टू स्प्रेन्स स्प्रेन्स व्हाट इट आर व्हाट आर स्प्रेन्स स्प्रेन्स आर कॉज्ड व्हेन जॉइंट इज फोर्स बियॉन्ड इट्स नॉर्मल रेंज सो अगर मेरा एल्बो का एक्सटेंशन इतना है और इतना इतना ही रेंज है नॉर्मल बट इसके बियॉन्ड मैं एक्सटेंड करने चाहता हूं हाइपर एक्सटेंशन तो अलग अलग लाइक अ ब्रिज जैसा दोनों दोनों बोन्स के बीच में ब्रिज जैसा बैठा हुआ है मेरा लेगामेंट अगर बहुत ज्यादा फोर्स फोर्सफुली मैं कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करके सीधा करता हूं तो मेरे लेगामेंट में स्प्रेन आएगा राइट सो व्हाट इट मे रिजल्ट इट मे रिजल्ट इन ओवर स्ट्रेचिंग टीरिंग ऑफ द लेगामेंट इट मे आल्सो रिजल्ट इन स्वेलिंग लॉस ऑफ पावर और एबिलिटी टू बियर वेट राइट पॉसिबल डिस्कलरेशन एंड देयर बी ब्रूजिंग डिपेंडिंग अपॉन कितना टूटा है लेगामेंट अंदर ब्रूजिंग होगा और पेन होगा राइट दैट इज स्प्रेन नाउ now what is strain strains are caused by muscles over stretching ab ye strain jo ligament mein hota hai strain which is bahut strong in bhag raha hu mera ligament stretch hua hai muscle hamstring khicha wo strain ho gaya it may result in partial or complete tear of the muscle matlab agar jitna zor se hamstring khichega based upon that it could mean it is a completely torn or a partial torn thing it could be a possible swelling discoloration and bruising right so now protection what is the treatment for it simple we have moved everybody knows rise right rest ice compression ele uh, elevation now we have gone little above than that what terminology what you using is police police p stands for protection chot laga hai us area ko protect kariye o and l stands for optimal loading don't don't completely usko avoid mat kariye jaise for example ankle sprain hua first 24 to 48 hours you can keep it compressed keep it elevated but jaisa jaisa wo uska symptoms better ho raha hai allow him to do optimal loading that means he is not going to do running tomorrow but if he can completely wait wear and walk normally you should allow him to do that third so that means we have enough evidence to say that early recovery of normal movement patterns are very good for treatment of musculoskeletal injuries then i stands for ice which has been always there c stands for compression which could be via crepe bandages or elastic adhesive bandages or some places e stands for elevation elevation is like kyunki agar hum niche rakhenge to with gravity swelling can be increased upar utha ke rakhenge to swelling ke aage agar aapke joint ke against jayega so the elevation can be can help in reduction of swelling now the aim is to reduce the bleeding and damage within the joints right so now so what we should not be doing kya karna hai wo samajh mein aa gaya what we shouldn't be doing is no harm no harm means h stands for no heat 
सो आइडियली अगर अक्यूट इंजरी है डू नॉट ट्राई टू पुट अगर अंदर इफ देर इज एनी पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ इंटरनल ब्लीडिंग डोंट पुट मोर हीट इन टू इट बिकॉज उससे बेसिक डायरेक्शन के साथ साथ वहां पे उसका इंफ्लोमेशन या स्वेलिंग बढ़ने का चांस है Second thing, alcohol. Alcohol vasodilator hai. So at you have to combine and you have to educate your athlete that whenever there's an acute trauma, alcohol should be taken away. Number three is running. So R stands for running. That means no movement for first 24 48 hours. जब तक acute symptoms does not settles down. Number four is massages. This stands good for all the physios and medicos that whenever there's a human trauma, अगर अंदर चोट लगा हुआ है तो first 48 hours में उसको unnecessary rub करने का जरूरत नहीं है. It's already a triggered joint, triggered tissue है. उसको और वो नहीं करना है. हमको और hyper activate नहीं करना है. Now this regime is used for ligament sprains, muscle strains, or muscle bruises. All the factors together it stands for that, right? Now let's go for a little bit of video to make understand कि exactly क्या है muscle, uh, what are ligament injuries. So let's start with some football injury to explain you exactly what is an ACL and how does an injury happens for an ACL. Sorry, this is this is this is this is the hamstring strain. Um, so you can just look into the muscle. Uh, Require high speed, power, and agility. Football they mainly occur during sprinting or acceleration. The hamstring muscles, the biceps femoris, semimembranosus, and semitendinosus, run along the back of the thigh from the pelvis to the shin bones. They allow for knee flexion and rear leg movement. Strains can be caused by an imbalance in thigh muscle strength, as the large and powerful quadriceps used to straighten the leg overstretch the hamstring muscles. Acute strains occur when sudden bursts of movement or force place so much stress on the hamstring muscles they partially or completely tear. After immediate treatment to reduce pain and swelling, hamstring strains must be rested from sporting activity. Physiotherapy and sometimes surgery may be required. So you see, सबसे important factor was sudden increase in the forceful uh, force, sudden increase in the muscle contraction could cause for it. Now, very importantly, what she said was the imbalance. This is where your factor of assessment and keeping the basic parameters to understand that if quadriceps, जो आपके थाई के सामने वाला मसल है, which is generally more stronger, if that becomes too strong and hamstring continues to become weaker, and if there is a history of a previous hamstring injury. that can give a very strong rise for either complete tear of hamstring or an anterior cruciate ligament injury which is in the front so ab uske bare mein dikhata hu main aapko exactly what how does an uh, anterior cruciate ligament injury can happen now the acl or anterior cruciate ligament is one of two ligaments inside the knee joint. Together, the ACL and PCL or posterior cruciate ligament stabilize the knee. The ACL travels from the back to the front of the knee joint and is connected to the femur and the tibia. The ACL plays an important role when you perform activities and sports that require changing direction. When the leg and body change direction, the ACL holds the femur and tibia. tibia together if the knee receives too much stress the acl could be sprained or completely torn without the acl the tibia can now move forward freely making the knee less stable to confirm the degree of your acl injury the experts at the sports medicine center at children's hospital colorado will perform a physical exam and use imaging like x-ray and mri if surgery is required Children's Hospital Colorado specializes in surgical techniques that repair the ACL while protecting the growth plates around the knee. Growth plates determine the future length and shape of the bone, so protecting them is specifically important to children and young athletes who are still growing. To begin the surgery, your surgeon will create several small holes and an incision for the instruments and the camera. Once inside, Your surgeon will examine your knee for any other damage and address it as needed. Your surgeon will remove the remaining scar tissue and torn ACL. Your new ACL can be created from a number of different tissues around the knee. We prefer to use tissue connecting the quadriceps and kneecap. 
the new ACL is prepared. Then tunnels are carefully drilled in the bone, avoiding the growth plates. Next, the surgeon places the new ACL in the tunnels and securely anchors it within the knee. The new ACL secures the tibia and restabilizes the knee. In order to get back to your sport safely and reduce the chances of re-tear, it's important to complete your post-surgery rehab. To learn more about the Sports Medicine Center, so see, why do I see this surgery? One, you can see the change of direction of direction movement, which is used in sports, basketball, you know, football, hockey, even athletics, when we have to do so much multi-directional movement patterns, this is such a common injury to happen. Now, if you have young athlete or even a high-end athlete, just a proper imbalance in the body, or a proper coordination, your body thaka was so this can reach to this kind of injury. Now I intentionally showed you the whole surgical process because it is a very complex injury. That's why it takes six to nine months or kabi kabi more than a year for an athlete to come back from nasal injury. So if we can prevent it, that could be the best thing. Otherwise, also the oh, whenever there's an injury happens, the impact should be not to rush through the rehab process. Because it's a very complicated thing, where hamstring be cut hai, so it's a very important consideration to keep in the mind. All right, so let's now let's go to the next factor of overuse injuries. What does overuse injuries happen? Overuse injuries can occur as a result of repetitive friction. Generally, there is no major history. It could be every day what you're doing that could lead on to having a repetitive friction, pulling, twisting or compression. It usually does not correlate with one episode of injury. So there's no one acute response. Every day, it will happen. And it could be due to biomechanical reasons. Javelin player, if uska core weak hai ya uska left glutes weak hai body ko stabilize nahi kar para fekne ke time mein then he, he can have a right shoulder problem so it's very important factor to understand the interaction of internal bodies as well as external factors for keeping overuse injuries in the mind so now rehabilitation and return to play one could expect full recovery from most soft tissue injuries in one to six weeks the length of time depends upon age general health and severity of injury in significant injuries, a plaster cast or splint can be added and at times surgical repair. So normally it takes six to eight weeks. Most of the times it can be managed conservatively. It can mean that initial stage where you might need to immobilize it. And in some certain cases, surgery is required if conservative management has not given much, uh, much rule. Now let's come back to more biggest. I'll take some common injury patterns why it is very so anterior crucial ligament is one of the most common injuries what you will see now in elite athletes. Exactly, it, it occurs most common in female athletes. It could be a career threatening injury because, as I told you, it takes around eight to ten months. So, it can be a career threatening. It could finish a lot of people, and a lot of evidence suggests that athletes cannot come back to their pre injury level as what they were doing before. It may require imaging, reconstructive surgeries, intensive physiotherapy. So, it is a very gamut of big things. It is a very big cycle. 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 It is what is the risk factor for ACL? Uh, hamstring quadriceps ratio. Hamstring or quadriceps ratio is very important. I mean, the front muscle, the back muscle, strong hona chahiye, barabar hona chahiye strength mein. Landing strategy. Ab jump karke kaise land karte hain, wo bahut important hai. Iska matlab agar aapka aapka bahut strong landing hai, jisme aapka hip aur knee mein agar flexion nahi hai, aur dono ka dono knee andar ki taraf collapse kar raha hai, wo ek bahut bada factor hai. Understand karne ke liye ki injuries ho sakte hain. Aur balance of proprioception agar aapka kharaab hai, to wo bhi ek factor hai. What are the other risk factors? So, now Santa Monica करके PE PE program Santa Monica US में उन्होंने एक बहुत strong PE PE program बनाया है. उनका emphasis है जो पूरा training में ये train करने के लिए soft landing on the ball of the foot. और ये engage करें जब आप jump करके when you jump and land, they they try to teach you to engage your hip and knee. They ensure that the knee अंदर की तरफ collapse नहीं करता. और they ensure कि आप hamstring gluteus muscle और outer strap hip muscle को utilize कर सकें. It is around six to eight weeks का program होता है initiate करने के लिए and then it can keep going on. Now lot of sports, so I'll just lot of sport also has gone specifically जैसे sport specific prevention program कौन सा है जैसे एक FIFA 11 plus program है. FIFA 11 plus program is an injury injury prevention program specific to the event of football. 
द प्रोग्राम टेक्स ट्वेंटी मिनट्स टू वी टू टाइम्स वीक करना है उनको और उसमें कोई स्पेसिफिक इक्विपमेंट का जरूरत नहीं है पंद्रह एक्सरसाइजेज है जिसमें उन्होंने बांटा है आठ मिनट रनिंग में दे हैव फॉर्मुलेटेड स्ट्रेंथ एंड प्लायमेट्रिंग एंड बैलेंस फॉर टेन मिनट्स रनिंग एक्सरसाइजेज फॉर टू मिनट्स high speed change of direction and it has got a three levels so based upon what level you're doing it is based upon, it, it it comprises of three levels so ye sab baat karne ke bajaye i'll just quickly show you back to back some videos to understand exactly acl ka prevention kaise ho sakta hai how much evidence do we have to understand ki jump landing technique ya change of direction how it can equate down to injuries and then little bit about santa monica program and fifa eleven plus program all right so let's go quickly to biomechanics of a study looking at the effects of the FIFA 11 plus injury prevention program which is a 15 to 20 minute warm up program um uh, designed to prevent especially lower extremity injuries um and it was designed for soccer players although it has been used in other sports so we were looking at whether or not it particularly where their knees are so preventing a collapse of their knees as they jump um and then also as they cut and run so we want to know if it's actually effective in doing that. so for the last 2 years we've been collecting data um on collegiate women's soccer teams um, and we've been doing both pre-season and post-season testing um biomechanically to see if they change uh, with use of that program being a physical therapist you automatically watch how people like move um especially walk but particularly run and jump and there's things that we are trained to look for clinically that we know are risk factors for future injury. So by mechanically we call that especially like the peak knee abduction moment um or angle. So you see the interaction between your foot, knee and hip kitna important hai jo andar ja raha hai kitna minutely ek ek angles ko dekh rahe hain try to do they're trying to do double leg they're trying to do single leg they're trying to do straight line change of direction everything is happening. that is how you get to know exactly what is the movement efficiency of an athlete especially with women athletes it's very very important to understand that's why i've shown you this video now the next one just to show what is fifa 11 plus now just to give an understanding of what exactly fifa 11 plus means this is specifically to football So you see, this is how specific, which requires your basic movement pattern of coordination, then proprioception, then strength component of it. Now this was specific, and then they do a lot of work with football also. So running, agility drills, and this is very specifically done. It takes 15 minutes. They have a specific injury prevention plan. Now, when I was talking about Santa Monica, I was just just to kind of exactly explain you what is that plan. And uh, sorry, this is a muscle breakdown. So yeah, I mean it's a it's a factor of exactly this is how Santa Monica also is based upon. I will not show um, much around it because it continues to become very monotonous now. So jab ye this is how we based upon the sport what we are involved we can we can we can modify it around to the thing and then ensure ki ye basic patterns eccentric component, neuromuscular component, speed component, change of direction component all of that is are met in terms of in our program now. 
right now couple of uh, couple of more uh, factors before i wrap it up would be your uh, soft tissue injuries which is in terms of tendon injuries so basically what are tendon injuries it is mainly produced by forces of compression friction and traction right teen have friction compression traction ke karan ho sakta hai इट इज यूजली वेल लोकलाइज पेन तो या हेमस्ट्रिंग के जहां पे खत्म होता है वहां पे पेन है या हील अकेली जहां पे खत्म होता है वहां पे पेन है इनिशियली ये स्टार्ट होता है छोटा अक्यूटली मतलब ये शुरुआत में ट्रेनिंग करने के वार्म अप के साथ ये पेन ठीक हो जाता है मैच खेलने के बाद ये ट्रेनिंग खत्म करने के बाद पेन वापस आता है राइट सो उसका तीन अलग का कॉम्पोनेंट है और धीरे 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 इट स्टार्ट टू बिकम वर्स so what are the three basic part reactive tendon pathology reactive one refers to the term of acute overload it causes thickening of tendon and pain and more common in young athletes and because of sudden increase in overload so here reactive ho gaya jab agar reactive stage mein aap sabse pehle tendon ko bacha sakte hain but agar hum push karte gaye if we don't utilize that time usko acche se apne respect nahi kiya and we keep pushing it will go into a disrepair stage this repair stage mein kya hota hai it involves worsening of acute stage ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ टेंडन मेट्रिक्स जो मेन टेंडन का अंदर का जो मेन कॉम्पोनेंट है जो धागा है वो टूट जाता है एंड देन लॉन्गर हिस्ट्री ऑफ सिम्टम्स इज देयर दैट मींस पेन विल बी देयर फॉर थ्री टू सिक्स मंथ्स एंड वी हैव नॉट रिस्पेक्टेड इट इट इज मोर क्रॉनिक एंड मोर डिफिकल्ट टू मैनेज जब हम टेंडन डिसपेयर स्टेज को अगर वो करते हैं फाइनली रीचेस टू अ डीजेनरेटिव टेंडन पैथोलॉजी नाउ दिस प्रेजेंस आफ्टर अ प्रोलॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम यू विल हैव टू इयर्स थ्री इयर्स ओल्ड हिस्ट्री इट विल बी वेरी वेरी कॉमन इन ओल्ड एज एंड कैन बी सीन इन रिक्रेशनल एथलीट Also, और आप अल्ट्रासाउंड में जाके देखेंगे तो वो एरिया का वैस्कुलरिटी अफेक्ट हो जाता है वो एरिया ऐसे व्हाइट पैचेस दिखता है क्योंकि उसमें डिजेनरेटिव कंडीशन मतलब आपको दिख सकता है उसमें एंड देन इट इज लाइकली बेस्ट ट्रीटेड विद इसेंट्रिक एक्सरसाइजेस एंड स्ट्रेंथनिंग अभी ट्रीटमेंट क्या है आइसोमेट्रिक सबसे पहले पेन रिलीविंग जब आइसोमेट्रिक्स रिकमेंडेशन करना है तो एथलीट हैज टू डू दैट तीन दिन में तीन चार बार ही हैज टू रिपीट एन एक्सरसाइज फॉर ऑलमोस्ट 90 टू 180 टाइम्स एंड इट मस्ट बी कंटिन्यू टू एथलीट फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड एटलीस्ट फॉर 3 मंथ्स उसको कंटिन्यू करते रहना पड़ेगा आइसोमेट्रिक्स के बाद यू हैव टू गो टू अ इसेंट्रिक पार्ट ऑफ इट इसेंट्रिक ट्रेनिंग इट इज मोस्ट इफेक्टिव इट इज वाइडली यूज्ड ट्रीटमेंट वेल एस्टैब्लिश्ड बने तो इसेंट्रिक जो होता है लेंथनिंग एक्सरसाइज होता है वो इसेंट्रिक होता है सो नाउ क्विकली कपल ऑफ मोर वीडियोस टू गिव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ टेंडन पैथोलॉजी बिफोर यू आई कैन रैप दिस अप नाउ so let's look into um an injury by fernando torres i hope the video plays well the smashes it into the other half of the field fernando torres really pulls up his pull down swing well he's got 30 seconds to survive the count to belly watch they won't stop playing now it's watch edge of the area कोई पीछे से कुछ नहीं आया वो बॉल को लंबा बॉल को वो करने के लिए गया पकड़ने के लिए इट वॉज अ वेरी बिग साइड फॉर इम बियॉन्ड कैपेसिटी एंड देन इट वेंट ऑफ नाउ दिस इज 2010 फुटबॉल वर्ल्ड कप फर्नांडो टोरस इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट स्टार प्लेयर ऑफ स्पेन नाउ नाउ सी दिस हैपेंस टू हिम so it is very important that if you don't give value to ek bar agar injury hua to you have to be extremely mindful and then you you have to make sure that reservations of certain things can be kept in an athlete's mind also it doesn't allows for him to be completely relaxed so what happens in a muscle injury i'll just quickly explain you first
You see, if you don't give respect to the muscle in the initial stage, what all it can mean down. I know there are a lot of information through videos, but it is very important for me to make you understand that initial acute stage is the best to manage. And then tendons are very, very tricky to manage because muscle fiber, egg, but pura ka pura toot ke, toh tendon ke nits lose this capacity forever. Sometimes it never comes back to normal. So one of the biggest gurus uh, of, of tendon pathology, which is Professor Jill Cook, unka ek char minute ka video hai. I'm going to put that it might sound a little um, technical, but all the coaches, you, if you understand this process of tendon mechanism, I think it will be very good for you. So I would, I would ask for maximum concentration for this video. It will be very useful for you, please. So people think of tendons as relatively simple things that just transmit the force between the muscle and the bone. It's really not like that at all. It's much, much more complex. And the, the most important thing that tendons do is store and release energy to allow um, us to propel ourselves or to uh, be athletic with much less metabolic cost. So sprinting down a 100 metre track, most of our propulsion forward of our calf comes from the spring behaviour of the Achilles. Now to do that, a tendon has to have a really complex structure. And there's some fantastic new work by has on screen to show that between the tendon fascicles that um, they slide and rotate which allows the tendon to, to really literally act like a spring. So there's about 10 different hypotheses from, for how you develop the tendon pathology but what it appears is that there's some sort of overload that is too much for the tendon that somehow affects the normal tendon matrix and you get changes in the matrix that are progressive that eventually lead to a tendon degeneration, which we know pretty much can't recover. It's, it's a pretty much a, a tissue that will never act like a tendon again. So you can have profound pathology, profound degeneration in your tendon and have no pain. So the converse is not absolutely true. It's very hard to have tendon pain when you don't have pathology, but you can have a lot of pathology without tendon pain. So what our physiotherapy interventions, our loading interventions do, is change the capacity of the tendon, make it tolerant to loads, regardless of the pathology. That takes away the pain, but it actually doesn't alter the pathology very much at all. We very rarely clinically image tendons anymore. Really, it's a clinical diagnosis and your imaging really doesn't change very much at all in terms of how you're going to approach that tendon. What we do know is it's not prognostic and it's not a good outcome measure. That is, what your tendon looks like at baseline doesn't give us any information about how it's going to respond to treatment, neither does serial imaging of tendons actually tell us anything um, about the tendon recovery? So you can actually be fully recovered from your pain, back at your sport, and your tendon can look exactly the same as the baseline. People are often told they have a tear or they have degeneration. They'll get very frightened of those terms and unnecessarily because the, the reliability of imaging is relative. All right. So other basic pattern, Megar, if I can explain you what exactly she says is normally there is an overload mechanism why a tendon becomes inflamed. So tendon has got enormous capacity to take up load. So it is like a spring. Yet spring just action karta, but overload bahut jaldi, too much too soon or beyond the capacity of the tendon to adapt to the load. So tendon ka matrix may break down. Hota hai. Once the tendon matrix breaks down, then it, we have to really go sequential way of getting the tendon matrix back. Otherwise, it becomes an absolute, uh, um, you know, complete uh, tendon which is because to a degenerative stage, it does not So, the factor was that sequential loading is important. Hai? It's a very important component. Number two factors, biggest thing with coaches I would request is please respect the whole rehab phase. So, one more thing they said was that you don't get real picture from ultrasound or MRI. So, sometimes when we say MRI, we say MRI, it's not coming out of the MRI. It doesn't show anything. Maybe MRI does not show anything, but pain is there. Sometimes it's the other way around. MRI shows far more bigger things, but the, the tendon is functionally doing well. So, please understand that the real pathology of the symptoms can be based upon how much load is and how much not is. Second factor, when the rehab phase is not don't push the athlete too much too soon because the chances of breaking down and breaking down far more worse is very very heavy. So this is the factor that you have to spring action. Tendon is not a relationship with pain. It has to be a normal architecture. 
So that's a very comp in co important component. So now everything comes down to how much training you have done, how much time you have given, and what kind of environment you create around how a training can be done, as in how things can be evolution, human evolution can happen. So I'll just leave you with last two videos about how human beings have evolved. Second thing, how future generations can evolve. So if only thing you can take away from today's thing is understand that more than one factor of soft tissue, khali har ek hamstring, hamstring nahi hai. there are more reasons for hamstring pain. And then once in hamstring pain, that's utna sara jo aapko alag -alag muscle spindle, fiber, active myosin dikhane ka matlab ye tha ki andar bohat sara neurochemical interactions hai. Please respect that. So last two videos and then I can just quickly take questions. So first video is about how human beings have evolved. The idea is just to show that as evolution hoga, human beings can get bigger and stronger and we can we can adapt to a certain situation. And one is going to be how future may aap hazar saal ke baad human beings kaise honge. So if you train your athletes well, give sufficient time, we, will, we can really make evolved champions if you want them. So let's go for basic evolution. Evolution kaise hua human beings. human beings took millions of years to be who we are today and that same principle goes with training i'm not saying ki humko ek million years rukna padega athlete banane ke liye but it takes time to build up skill it takes time time to build up a certain physiology and genetics is important so we have to keep the human interactions of emotions science as well as the genetic predisposition into play in terms of understanding how we are managing Last bit, what humans will look like in the future, just because allah allah environmental factor to kaise manage kar sakta hai ek, ek aadmi ko, ek, malab, one human being to look or an athlete to behave in a certain manner. I'll just last video quickly. What humans will look like in a thousand years. Humans are still evolving. So where will evolution take us in a thousand years? Chances are... Humans have already seen a movement hike over the last 130 years. In 1880, the average American man was she five foot seven. Today, he's five foot ten. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Can, can it be eyesight, seen? No. Health, no. And much more. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, sorry. Just a second. Can you see me now? I think I'm seeing you, not the screen. Okay, I'll just do it again. Is it possible? Is can you see it now? No, no, no. no. Sir, again, you Wait. have to uh, share your screen. Screen, yeah. Ah, now you can see. Now, yeah. Now you can tell out the video. Yes. What humans will look like in a thousand years? Humans are still evolving. So where will evolution take us in a thousand years? What humans will look like Chances in a thousand years? will be years. taller. Hold on, hold humans on, have already on, seen on, a boom in height over the last 130 years. In 1880, the average American male was five foot seven. Today, he's five foot ten. 
We may also merge what machines humans will look like enhance our hearing, years. eyesight, humans health, are still evolved, and much more. So where will evolution right now, there are hearing aids years. that let you record Chances sounds are will be generate taller. white noise. Humans have already come with built in phone in the last Another example is the team out of the universe. The average American man which is developing bionic eyes that help the blind. He's five foot ten. But it's not impossible may also to imagine that the technology can enhance our hearing for saying what we currently consider and much more. Like right now, there are hearing such as that like record sounds generate There will eventually be a day when even prosthetics are no longer just for the same. Another example is the team out of the just our outside appearance that will change. Developing bionic eyes. Our genes will also align to microscopic levels. But it's not impossible. Possible to survive. imagine that this technology For example, could become an Oxford led study in what we currently HIV infected as children in South Africa, different energies of health, such as infrared. It turns and out they have a built in defense. There will eventually be a day when prosthetics virus are no longer just for the sake of And with our gene editing, it's not tools, just like our outside We may eventually control our genes and our DNA genes will also evolve where we make ourselves microscopic immune to disease to aid and even reverse the effects of For example, an another way to jumpstart the cure of HIV infected children in South Africa is to move some living health tomorrow. Mars or South, they have a built-in defense sunlight generator, which can be used on Mars, and will evolve days. larger people. And with that, it will more like prison words. We may eventually control our Mars' gravitational pull, where we will make our being immune to the Earth, and even people born on Mars might actually be taller. Another way to jumpstart the human evolution in space, the fluid that separates our vertebrae to Mars, which led Mars to see the sphere of our sunlight, to suggest that Mars can be grounded on Mars, allow the human body to elongate that can absorb the energy. To our height. And since Mars, however, is not, not even a moon, is only 30 years old, the biggest Earth, change in human people born on Mars may actually be the next thousand years on Earth. Immortality. In space, the path to that separates our world likely required humans, which led an American aerospace engineer, Robert Zucker, right to suggest that Mars is slowly rationing to allow for the human spine to elongate enough to determine a few extra inches to our height. However, not even a move to the claims are next to the next change in transplant evolution that we may have to Whatever happens in the next thousand years, immortality merge with machines. The path to immortality will likely require humans to download the human race is always into a machine. And the fast right now, science branch on Italy. In China, are there chance for metrics of outrunning to determine if you can transfer consciousness from one body to another? They claim their next big step is to transplant human heads. Whatever happens in the next thousand years, whether we merge with machines or become them, one thing is certain the human race is always changing. The faster we change and branch off from Earth, the better chance we have of outrunning extinction. So anyway, the video was made out of some other context, but I wanted to show that how evolution is going to happen and it has changed us in the past. And if it's sufficient time, sufficient training and right kind of environment, we can produce world champions in the future. I think I would rest my case with that. I'm, I'm, I've already shot about the time. So thank you so much. I'm happy to take any questions if I have time, uh, Commander Sir. I think uh, you can take questions for about uh, another 10 minutes. So, Mr. Asutosh Barbe says, why does severe cramping occur? How can one avoid? For example, one of my long distance swimmer used to cramp severely eight kilometers into his swim and had to once abandon his 10 kilometer sea swim exactly eight kilometers into the swim. So, sir, you see, you, you have very, very rightly, as in you have very spot on and specific information. What we need to probably see is either use science as in in terms of blood lactate. So you've got, if you can get, uh, you know, somebody, if you are part of the size scheme, then get one of your exercise physiologists to come and help you with it. So try and see any, any blood markers if it's that's causing, or you also have to sit down with an athlete and ask him, is that has become a part of, he's become so tuned to that conditioning in the brain that now the moment eight kilometers starts to happen, he starts to believe now that cramping will happen, cramping will happen, cramping will happen. Third factor is his nutritional factor. Is it that probably his nutrition level is reserves are good enough only for that eight kilometers and beyond that it starts to deplete. So you have to go a little bit more deeper than that's the training. Training is good enough, but the other parameters also have to be seen. The fourth factor I would say is the intensity of the training. So does that the boy gets too anxious about the competition or and then maybe he's much different in training. So you have to create that environment of challenge in the training also. But I would really, this is a very interesting case and I would certainly take help of a sports scientist to answer that question. Uh, Shikan, can you stop sharing your screen, please? Yes, sir. Hold on. I have to 
to just stop share. Yeah. Yeah. Now. All right. Next one, uh, sir. Please share about fascia pains in case of distance runner. Also, please see fascia are basically gelatin like structure which is covering the muscle. So skin ke niche muscle ke upar ek compact agar ek cling wrap jaisa hai, jo ki aapke muscle ko saath mein rakha hua hai. So basically, facial pains are normally interactions between your muscle as well as the joint. So element of either joint stiffness is there or muscle fatigue set in the current, there's a more pull or more elongation starts to happen in fascia or fascia elongating structure. Nahi hai. So it, is, it doesn't allow too much of permissibility there. So when we say facial pain, bolte hai, it is not very well understood because it cannot be in isolation. Aapko fascia ka pain individually nahi ho sakta hai. Either it is a product of a joint being unstable or stiff or non-mobile or it could be a weak, uh, result of muscle weakness or muscle tightness or functional incapacity of the muscle to build that, to do that movement pattern for longer period of time. Especially in case of long distance runners, aapka sabse important factor is muscle, muscle ka fatigue uh, factor kitna hai aapka. That is to be understood. Um, Recent, Mr. Praful Upadhyaya says, re recent studies have sh shown that our understanding of muscle fibers is very limited. Without understanding of fascia, and lots of injuries have been noticed due to improper functioning of fascia or nodes present in 100%. So, look, I said that every it's a lot of muscle spindles and millions of, millions of muscle spindles and multiple muscles are working together in interaction to bring about a muscle movement. Uh, to bring about a joint movement. So agar obviously aapka interaction aga soft tissue makes at nahi yoga, so you'll end up having some kind of pain. Fascia, just hum trigger point bolte hai, wo ek, jo knots bar bar bola jata, it is still not very well documented to know what trigger point kya hai. Trigger point such may exist karta hai, kya woi reason hai pain ka, we still do not know. Aap humko ye dekha gaya hai ki jo fatigue satin on ke baad, tight muscle mein khaskar sympathetic nervous response jis bhi muscle mein, parasympathetic sorry, jis mein zada hota hai, us mein aapka will end up seeing knots building up the muscle, especially trapezius ho gaya. So with some gentle massages, some hands on release, that pain gets better. But abhi bhi humko clarity nahi hai ki exactly ek fascia isolation mein problem karta hai kya, we still do not know. And I am my personal belief, it's not just the fascia alone. We have to think in terms of soft tissue as, as together. Subse important factor is functional training. Ka jata hai. You spoke about understanding of, let's say, improper functioning. So, muscle ka proper functioning kya hai? Wo us, uske game ke liye ya unke activity ke liye kya kya muscle ka interaction important hai? Wo bhi samajna bahut zaruri hai. Right? Uh, uh, you said something, please guide something about snapping hip syndrome. Is it serious injury? What should be done? Snapping hip syndrome nahi hota hai. Normally, gluteus medius is stiff hone ke karan. Jab jab aap internal external rotation pe jate hain, to gluteus medius is snap karta hai upar aapke hip ki taraf. To wo generally isle hota hai ki aapka jo saamne ka ek chota sa muscle hai, jisko tensor facial arta bote hai, wo bohat overactive ho jata hai. Aapke hip ko wo aage ki taraf rotate karke rakta hai, aur utna hai pull aata hai gluteus medius ke upar. So generally with good muscle contraction, muscle training of gluteus medius or thoda hip mobility work karne se taki aapka aage ka jo hip flexor ya tensor facial arta bahut strongly contract na kare, to wo aapko manage ho sakta hai. But that is in general term. We have to also see kahi joint ke andar impingement to nahi hai. So that is the thing. But generally when you say hip um, snapping, it's with the gluteus medius tendon. And yes, it is definitely not a very major injury. It can be managed. Um, uh, Leslie, Mr. Leslie, for a, Les, Mr. Leslie says, for a, can you state that badminton professional hamstring injury are minimal? No, sir, there is no, I mean, we can't say that badminton professional players don't get hamstring injuries. As a, I mean, I have not gone in terms of specifically badminton player ka injury data. But because it has to go to serious contraction in the lunge position and then go back to the lunge so eccentric contraction in their muscle is very much. So I would suggest that badminton player may be hamstring injury common. How many numbers are I would not be knowing on the top of the thing because I don't know about recent evidence about that recent evidence. But for sure, it is a very common injury in badminton players. Um, uh, Mr. Amit says, please tell rehabilitation exercise for rupture of plantar fascia. Agar aapka pura plantar fascia pura rupture hua hai, to sir, then you 100% have to offload it for 8 to 12 weeks. Taki wo jo fascia tuta hai, pura wo kahin na kahin approximate kar sake. 
अगर चार हफ्ते में अगर रिपेयर प्रोसेस नहीं दिखता ये भी आपको पहले ही डिसाइड करना पड़ेगा कि अगर आपका जुड़ रहा है कि नहीं जुड़ रहा है और एक कंसल्टेंट एक ऑर्थोपेडिक कंसल्टेंट से बात करना पड़ेगा अगर चार से पांच हफ्ते में रिपेयर नहीं दिखता है सो आइडियली रिक्वायर सर्जिकल प्रोसेस अभी एक बॉटम बीच में एक सेंटर लाइन आया है पीआरपी का प्लेटलेट रिच प्लाज्मा का ज्यादा एविडेंस नहीं है उसके बारे में बट ऐसा बोला गया है कि अगर कुछ फाइबर टूटा है पूरा नहीं टूटा है तो पीआरपी करके छह से आठ हफ्ता अगर आप बूट में रहेंगे तो वो मसल फाइबर जुड़ सकता है बट हैविंग सेट दैट ऐसे कितने एथलीट को हम जानते हैं खासकर डिजेनरेटिव कंडीशन में कि अगर पूरा फेशियर टूट जाए वो वैसे का वैसे ही रहेगा बट आप धीरे धीरे ट्रेनिंग करके अपने काफ का अपने हेमस्ट्रिंग का और अपने ग्लूट्स का पोस्टीरियर चेंज जो पीछे वाला मसल को अगर आप स्ट्रेंथन करेंगे तो आपका इम्पैक्ट आपकी फुट के ऊपर से हट जाता है सो अगर वो रपच्चर टेंडन पूरा का पूरा टूटा भी हुआ है तो भी यू माइट नॉट फील पेन एंड यू कैन बी फंक्शन इनफ इफ यू डू ग्रेडेड अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ वर्क स्टेप बाय स्टेप अगर किसी कंसल्टेंट के अंदर करेंगे तो इट कुड बी यूजफुल uh how to determine composition of twitch fiber sir it requires a scientific thing the gold standard is uh, uh is a muscle biopsy there are some experts like dr saju and dr pralay majumdar sitting here these guys are uh, they have done extensive work in sai to understand this we also do a swab testing nowadays to understand but the sabse important hai aapko muscle ka section nikal ke usko biopsy mein dal ke dekhna hai ki uh, long twitch hai ki short twitch hai ab wo human ethics consideration ke andar aata hai ki aap kya apne muscle ko kaatne denge to agar agar wo aisa kuch study agar hai western countries mein hua hai india mein agar ho jaye to we can do that and it's easy to find i'll take two or three more questions uh, for a coach what are the symptoms to know what the athlete has a white or red i think yes ek ke baad ek ke baad i can see white or red muscle fibers Uh, but yes, as I said, it requires a proper scientific te- testing. Nowadays, swab के साथ बोलते हैं, but it is around I uh, मेरे understanding में around ninety eight percent उसका specificity is still not hundred percent sure कि उसके कारण होता ही. I just have to put my thing into charging. Otherwise, I'm just all right. So yeah. So that that is basically हम हम exactly नहीं बता सकते जब तक muscle biopsy का result नहीं आए तो हमारे पास तो वो एक important consideration. uh and then okay please tell me in swimming injuries like shoulder breast stroke knee lower back pain how we come one or two swimmers is facing after taking all perceptions or can you suggest the f- fuel just after the training so look इट्स वेरी कॉमन आप ब्रेस्ट स्ट्रोक में बहुत ज्यादा मूवमेंट होता है आपका तो अब आपको ये देखना है कि आपका रेंज ऑफ मोशन शोल्डर में है कि नहीं आपका जो कोर मसल है वो स्ट्रॉन्ग है कि नहीं नीचे जाके ऊपर आने के लिए तो अगर ये एक के बाद ये ब्रेस्ट स्ट्रोक में पूरा का पूरा बॉडी इंटरेक्शन में काम काम करेगा वन ज्वाइंट इज कनेक्टेड टू अनदर ज्वाइंट तो अगर एक भी ज्वाइंट में अगर मसल वीक है या वो ज्वाइंट का मोबिलिटी वीक है या आपने ट्रेनिंग में सफिशियंट टाइम नहीं दिया है या उनका स्किल ही वीक है अभी वो स्किल को समझने से पहले वो कंपटीशन में जा रहे हैं सो ऑल दोज फैक्टर्स कैन बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर हैविंग इंजरीज सो आई वुड सजेस्ट अंडरस्टैंड सबसे पहले कि आपका जो बेसिक बेस लाइन टेस्टिंग होना जरूरी है स्विमिंग के अकॉर्डिंग बेस्ट स्ट्रोक के लिए आपका इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल रोटेशन होना चाहिए आपका हिप का इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल रोटेशन ऑप्टिमल होना चाहिए आपका बैक एक्सटेंशन रेंज अच्छा होना चाहिए आपका थोरासिक मोबिलिटी हर डायरेक्शन में अच्छा होना चाहिए तो ये चार पांच बेस लाइन बेस लाइन टेस्टिंग करके आप थ्रू द सीजन देख सकते हैं उसको बार बार वो टेस्टिंग करके कि ये ऑप्टिमल रेंज में है कि and then there are multiple questions but i think i will rest my case here and if any panel has to be asking or discussing something i'm happy to um to discuss upon that and dr saju sir everybody and dr pralu um, dr pralay also is sitting as i have more than 25 30 questions on muscle uh, fiber identification uh, so anybody would want to say something about that or if anything else has to be asked from me i'm happy to suggest something Ajay would you like to say something <clears throat> uh, I think Dr Majinder is the best person to speak on muscles uh, because, but I uh, think he is just uh, he just gone away from the panel I don't know by okay. mistake no, so or... look I mean jo jo bar bar I will make it easier and just say ki bar bar jo jo question puch rahe hain sir white and muscle fibers predominantly sab mein hota hai किस में ज्यादा है वो सबसे गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड है आपका मसल बायोप्सी वो लैब के थ्रू हो सकता है 
देर आर सर्टन लेबोरेटरी स्पेशली बॉम्बे में कुछ लैब्स हैं जहाँ पे आप आपका इंटरनल स्वैब आपके चीक के अंदर का स्वैब लेते हैं और इसके बेसिस में वो टेस्टिंग करके वो बताते हैं कि आपको आपको कैसे पता कर सकते हैं थर्ड इज जेनेटिक टेस्टिंग है अब बहुत सारे लेबोरेटरीज चेन्नई में है न्यूट्रिशन आप इतना इतने बड़े जार में अपना अपना सलाइवा को आप निकालते हैं स्कूटम आप उसको पूरा क्रिएट करते हैं एक बात भरते हैं वो लैब में जाने के बाद आपके जेनेटिक प्रीडिस्पोजिशन से बताता है कि आप प्रिडोमेंटली फास्ट ट्विच फाइबर कैटेगरी में आएंगे कि स्लो ट्विच फाइबर कैटेगरी में आएंगे बट सबसे गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड है मसल बायोप्सी मसल मसल को काट के देखना है अब उसके लिए वही बोला मैं उसके लिए एथिकल कंसिडरेशन आता है ह्यूमन इंटरेक्शन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू कि आप किसी के मसल को काट के देख सकते हैं क्या आई थिंक इट शुड बी गुड फ्रॉम माई एंड एंड इफ एनीथिंग एल्स हैज टू बी सेड आई एम आई मीन इफ एनी पैनल वांट्स टू से समथिंग आई एम हैप्पी टू टेक दैट क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर सरला है हमारे साथ शी कैन आंसर समथिंग ऑन दिस पॉसिबल डॉक्टर आएगा आई हैव अ स्मॉल A, a, you know, rather like, since you have been acquainted with the world's latest trends, and you are told that the biopsy is the best way, and it has to be a cross section of muscles. I've been yes, given sir. to understand that a small needle insertion, you can do it. Is there any simple devices been in, uh, in any of the advanced countries to do the biopsy? Uh, has ever been involved? So it is done by a simple small needle insertion only. Just that certain fiber, a small fiber, has to be. What they do is they are doing a microscopic examination there, but it still needs to go deep down in the muscle to exactly identify that. Indirectly, it definitely causes some muscle tissue damage, which is a part of the whole process. Okay. So there is no uh, process involved where it could be uh, done uni universally. Such, Sir, the, uh, the saliva, the saliva, the saliva of course is there. Yeah. But that is you. You also mentioned that that is uh, not us and uh, no, you know, accurate so you, measure. No, no. Yeah. So the 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 labs themselves are saying it's around ninety eight point certain factor, which is almost ninety nine percent specificity because in Western countries, um, the the legal systems are so strong that they want to keep themselves a little bit uh, safe in that regards. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Ma'am, I'm not able to hear you. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, I think your presentation was very good. Like Thank yesterday, you. you took from basics to Olympics. Same way from basics, you started. Muscle biopsies. We are not doing it because we have ethical considerations for doing that. We are not so much advanced, or yes, rather, not advanced. I should not say it is other. in the sense in the medical colleges and all yes, but we have not integrated in our uh, assessment of an athlete still because we have to take a lot of sports science though we are uh, advancing application of sports science in our sports field is not happy, happening happening yes. because integration is not happening and that is the, i think one of the objectives of this coach development program how health can be evolved in each of these i think it was a before we talk into muscle biopsies i think small small parameters what we are doing testing yes. even if they are integrated in their uh, system of training every day and you are objective of telling how soft tissue injuries to be protected prevented and all if they can be done i think even 40 to 50% of injury prevention can have happen and we can reach to a certain extent yes, yes. Uh, but that is not happening that integration is not happening as yet but those facilities are available in india yes ma'am thank you yeah. thank you so much very very insight yeah uh, thank you dr sarla that was uh, absolutely right and uh, the aim of all these lectures ka ek hi simple aim hai ki hum log sports science ko chote se chote level se integrate karna shuru kar dein sportsmen aur athlete ki training mein that is the main aim agar wo uh, यंग लेवल से शुरू हो जाए ठीक से तो स्पोर्ट्स इंजरीज भी कम होंगी देर बी मच लेसर इंजरीज एंड द ट्रेनिंग विल आल्सो बी मच मोर साइंटिफिक एंड सिस्टमेटिक दैट इज द मेन थिंग तो आपके दो लेक्चर्स जो हैं कल और आज दे वर वेरी नाइस एंड यू हैव रियली टेकन अस फ्रॉम टू ऑल लेवल्स ऑफ ट्रेनिंग बोथ फॉर चिल्ड्रेन फॉर Mid level athletes and for senior athletes, yeah. I I should uh, I will take this opportunity on behalf of all of us to thank uh, Shrikan a lot uh, with these four five lectures in these last fifteen uh, twenty days. He has uh, given a lot of 
general and specific uh, information on injury prevention and on what to do for young athletes how to do load management etc and i hope ki logo ne logo ko ab ye coaches ko thoda bahut ye acha idea ho gaya hoga ki how to go ahead with training in their respective uh, schools or in their training centers or in their academies so thank you very much shikan and we look forward to your further association with us thank you thank, thank you sir. panelists thank, thank you very much uh, my only request to all the all the attendees is ki once the program starts and once the panelist has already speaker has already put his screen please stop uh, putting anything in the chat box because wo continuously disturb karta rehta hai aur slides ko bhi disturb karta rehta hai ek baar agar slide show shuru ho jata hai to chat box mein kuch bhi mat daliye thank you very much kal hamara lecture uh, final lecture hoga injury prevention ka uh, see you tomorrow thank you